Have you ever dreamed of fire? And no, I'm not talking about the kind that burns to the touch, no. I'm talking about F-I-R-E, which stands for financial independence, retire early. But really, what would you be willing to do to achieve this nirvana? To live that enviable life of a digital nomad, bouncing from one Airbnb to another, with nothing but a laptop and an adventure-laden Instagram feed to call your office. It's the modern gold rush, isn't it? Only instead of panning for gold, we're trading stocks, crypto, or more practically, spamming copy and paste on remote job applications. You know, I realized something a few years back. As the world was shrinking faster than a cheap t-shirt in a hot wash, I saw an opportunity. Why chain myself to a cubicle under the fluorescent tyranny of office lighting when I could code from the beaches of Bohol or the cafes of Rome? And so I embarked on the quest for the holy grail of employment, the remote software engineering job. I applied to dozens of these gigs. I imagine it was a bit like online dating, but instead of getting ghosted after a bad date, I was ghosted by HR managers from across the globe. But persistence is key, they say. And indeed, after what seemed like an eternity scrolling through endless job listings and polishing my resume to a blinding sheen, success. I landed a remote job, real quick. Like and subscribe for more amazing videos just like this one. Now let me ask you, would you trade your morning commute for a morning stroll on a beach in Bali? Exchange your suit and tie for, well, whatever you find at the bottom of your backpack? It's a tough call, I know. The allure of the office gossip, the communal coffee pot, the ever ringing phones, hard to give up, but somehow I managed. I'll never go back to an office again. Unless, of course, it's the headquarters of my own startup. Then it's a different story. I might even buy a fancy coffee machine to lure me in every morning. The dream is to be the guy who walks into his own office whenever he pleases, wearing flip-flops and a triumphant grin, knowing that he's successfully cheated the system that chains so many to their desks. The path to fire isn't just a financial plan. It's a full-blown lifestyle revolution. It's about finding that sweet spot where your bank account grows while you're asleep in a hammock somewhere exotic. It's not for everyone though. It takes a certain type to stare into the abyss of the unknown and say, yeah, I'll jump into that. So what's your move? Will you join the ranks of us noble nomads, those gallant pioneers of the digital frontier? Or will you cling to the safety of the familiar where the only sands you see are the ones stuck in the office hourglass counting down to retirement when you're 70 years old and too decrepit to enjoy life. The way I see it, it's about choices, about daring to dream of a life less ordinary, about deciding whether you're the kind of person who takes the road less traveled or the one who just posts inspirational quotes about it on social media. Choose wisely, my friend. So let's dive deeper into this fabled financial independence, retire early business. What exactly are you willing to sacrifice to join the ranks of the enviably unchained? Would you hustle through the day and night, toggling between gigs like a caffeinated DJ switches tracks at a rave? Imagine this, while most were just coming to grips with their morning coffee, I was already deep into debugging code thanks to a handy double espresso. And when the sun set on my coding escapades, I transformed into the charismatic bartender, shaking cocktails and spinning tails down under in Australia. Ah, the life, toggling between semicolons and shakers. Why the nightlife gig? Not just for the extra cash, though that was a welcome bonus, but for the sheer unadulterated social spice it added to my life. Working these two gigs, I was a nocturnal creature with the savings rate of a squirrel prepping for a nuclear winter. Stashing away nuts, or dollars in my case, became second nature. All this scrimping wasn't just for the thrill of watching my bank balance grow. It was strategic, with an end game in sight. I wasn't just saving, I was investing. I flipped a house back in the States, bought low, sold slightly less low, and the stock market? Oh, the stock market was my casino, and baby, I was all in. Now onto my weapons of choice, VTI, the broad market stalwart, for when I was feeling prudent, VT Sachs and chill anyone, and TQQQ, the wild child of the stock market with its triple leveraged antics tracking the NASDAQ. You're crazy, they told me. Crazy like a fox, maybe. 
I had faith in technology's prowess to untangle the Gordian knot of modern woes. And yes, even now with the markets trembling over geopolitical jitters about potential conflicts involving Israel, Iran, and the ever-looming specter of Russian and Ukrainian tensions, I'm holding steady. This journey wasn't just about making money, it was about making money move. Every dollar had to sprint, not saunter. Sure, there were moments when the financial horizon looked about as clear as mud after a monsoon. But that's the thrill of the game, isn't it? The high stakes, the adrenaline rush of a well-timed investment, the sweet dopamine hit of a soaring stock. So let's talk sacrifice. Are you ready to live like a hermit so you can retire like a medieval lord? To grind through code by day and sling drinks by night? To be so multifaceted you're practically a one-person economy? This isn't just about pinching pennies. It's about squeezing them till they scream. In the end, it's about how much you're willing to give up now to gain something greater on the horizon. Are you prepared to be that relentless, that resilient? Because let me tell you, freedom isn't free. It's bought with the currency of hard graft, foresight, and a dash of daring. Do you have what it takes to buy your ticket to the nomadic nirvana? Or will you be the one watching from the sidelines, sipping a poorly mixed cocktail of regret and resignation? Have you ever toyed with the idea of packing up your life, flipping the bird to the conventional grind, and just going, for example, to a place like the Philippines? Imagine swapping out your predictable daily grind for a life teeming with adobo, sinigang, and the occasional lechon feast. And let's not skirt around the fact that for a foreign devil like me, the dating scene here is something akin to shooting fish in a barrel. I've been living the dream in the Philippines for over a year now, holing up in a swanky condo in BGC Manila. It's the kind of place where you can forget that you ever knew the harsh embrace of a nine to five. Now my toughest decision of the day is whether to have my rice with pork or shrimp. And as for work, well, let's just say that my office hours are as fluid as the rum in my Friday night cocktail. In a couple of weeks, I'll be off to Bohol. It's not just an escape, it's a full-on immersion into a world where chocolate hills are more than just a sweet daydream and where Tarsiers look at you as if they know all your secrets. The beauty of living like this, my nomadic friend, is that each new place brings a fresh backdrop to what can only be described as a beautifully chaotic way of living. Now let's get real for a second. Have you ever seriously considered the perks of living somewhere where your dollar isn't just strong, it's Herculean? Where the cost of a seaside meal might rival that of a Starbucks latte back home? I'm not just talking about surviving, I'm talking about thriving. Over here you can live large on less, invest wisely, and watch your financial independence flourish while you're sipping on a coconut by the beach. But it's not all sunsets and siestas. Let's talk food. If your palate hasn't danced the tango with Filipino cuisine, are you even living? Here food is not just sustenance, it's a celebration. From the tangy bliss of a well-made adobo to the soul-soothing warmth of a cine gang on a rainy day, every meal is a reminder that life, much like Filipino cooking, can be a delightful mix of sweet, sour, and spicy. And then there's the social scene. Back in the States, or even down under in Australia, sure, I never had much trouble in the dating department. But here, let's just say the playing field is different. There's a certain charm to being the intriguing foreigner with stories to tell and places to show. The dating game here is less about swiping left or right and more about real connections, spontaneous adventures, and shared laughter over a plate of crispy lechon. So, what do you say? Is it time to consider trading in your alarm clock for island time? To swap your briefcase for a snorkel? If you're even slightly tempted, maybe it's time to ask yourself what's truly keeping you tethered. Could it be that the greatest adventure of your life is just a decision away? After all, life's too short for maybes. Like and subscribe for more amazing videos just like this one.